Have you ever wondered why the assistants at stores, movie theaters or gas stations only replace paper rolls in their printers but they never replace ink or toner? The answer is thermoprinting. There are three kinds of thermoprinting. Direct, thermal transfer and dye sublimation printing. In this video we will focus on the oldest and probably the most common kind, direct thermoprinting. Let's start with the structure of a thermal printer. In simple terms, it's made up of a thermal head with tiny needles and a roller controlled by a precise engine which moves the paper to place it below the head. When we want to print, for example, a parking ticket, the electronic system controlling power supply to each needle in the head heats only the ones that are needed for our ticket printout. The paper that goes between the head and the roller is blackened in contact with the heated needle matrix, producing a single narrow line of print. Line by line, we finally get our ticket and we can place it under the front window, just in time before the parking inspector comes. But wait, does all paper have such properties? Is it enough to heat it up? Well, as we can see, the paper used in thermal printer differs from regular paper we use every day. We call it thermal paper. I'll try to briefly discuss its structure. As onions have layers, thermal paper also has layers. In most cases, it is standard paper that has been coated with a pre-coat layer and a thermal sensitive layer also known as a thermal reactive layer. Why are these layers used? Let's start with the thermal reactive layer. It contains some dyes, for example Luco dyes, developers, which have an acidic environment, sensitizes and stabilizes. Before it's heated, the dye is colorless. When the paper is heated above the melting point, the developer gets in contact with the dye, which results in a change of color. It happens because the Luco dye is chemically transformed from a non-colored to a colored form by changing its pH value. This process is called halochromism. Dyes and developers are enough to produce color when melted, but they do not mix very well. That's why in most cases both dye and developer are encapsulated by solvent which facilitates the process. This solvent is called sensitizer. Sensitizers also help to optimize the temperature of colorization, which saves electrical energy. Unfortunately, Luco dyes quickly return to the colorless state under the influence of many external factors. This process can be slowed down by using stabilizers. This is especially important if we need the printout to stay for a longer period of time. Under the thermal reactive layer, there is a pre-coat layer. Why is it used? First, it improves heat insulation to protect paper from damage. It also fills in all the gaps in the base paper to make it smooth. And finally, it absorbs molten dyes, keeping the thermal print head clean, which is very important. I'm sure we all know what happens when the printing elements of a printer are covered with ink. The printer spits on the paper and we get pretty ink stains all over the printouts. Of course, we would like to avoid that. In the case of prints that need to be more durable and resistant to various external factors, the thermal paper is coated with so-called top coat and back coat. These layers improve the resistance of a printout a lot. It is more resistant to scratching, humidity, sunlight and other things. But this kind of paper is more expensive and in everyday life we don't need it so often. After all, why should we get an indestructible receipt for a loaf of bread. So where can we use thermal printing? Direct thermal printing is a very convenient solution wherever continuous work is needed and it would be impractical to replace the ink very often. For example in grocery stores where receipts are printed all the time, ticket machines at movie theaters, parking meters, etc. Such a printer can be very small, easy to transport, 
and it ensures quick and silent work. It also includes very few movable elements, which has a direct impact on its durability and frequency of repairs. And finally, the price of a thermal paper is relatively low. It is really important in the case of warehouses or storerooms where huge amounts of receipts, shipping labels and barcodes are printed. However, like any other technology, thermal printing has its limitations. Due to relatively low resolution and the fact that the printout is black and white, we are not likely to get a beautiful photo with a fantastic color depth from such a printer. Of course, there are also thermal printers that have the resolution which makes it possible to print vivid, colorful photos. But they are in minority. What's interesting, thermal printers are also used in areas such as medicine and research, for example in ultrasound electrocardiogram and printouts from some laboratory research. Apart from the strong and weak points of a thermal printer, the thermal paper is also important. Depending on the application, we need to take into consideration factors such as resistance to abrasion, humidity, low and high temperatures, chemicals and other external factors. The majority of thermal paper available on the market is designed to print point-of-sale receipts, tickets and labels, whose durability is very low. With time they fade, and exposing the printouts to factors such as high temperature would quickly destroy it. Therefore, if you would like to keep a receipt or ticket as a souvenir or for warranty purposes, it is good to take a photo of it or scan it. It's really hard to effectively complain about a faulty product if you show the shop assistant a white piece of paper on which you can hardly see anything. Believe me. There are also kinds of thermal paper which thanks to protective layers keep the print visible for years, even though it is exposed to external factors. They can be used, for example, in shipping labels, especially in the case of parcels sent to distant places. But paper that is more resistant to particular factors is also more expensive. Of course, this subject is more complicated than it seems and you can't have paper resistant to everything. And yet, knowing the conditions at a certain place, we can always choose something that will be practical. Unless we work inside a metallurgical furnace. In that case, I suggest changing your workplace. That's all that I wanted to tell you about direct thermal printing. Now, every time you do the shopping or buy a ticket, you will hear the tiny heated needles that work hard to give you a receipt. Which you will probably not take at all or throw into the nearest trash can. Well, we will have to deal with it. Finally, let me remind you that if you are a student and feel that a huge roller called mathematics or physics is chasing you, I'd like to invite you on my online private classes. You can find all the info in the description. Thank you for watching!